Hi, sweetie, Sam Origin. Welcome to Simnaya or uh, Naya Sim, and thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing correct. So, I am going to ask this. I know this guy is uh, like, you know, he has upper hand somewhere and all that, but I keep wondering why he still has a platform because this man has uh, done so many or said so many crazy things like on this platform and nobody is uh, holding him responsible or nothing has happened to his uh, platform. I mean, people that look like me cannot even talk about African-American history or black history without getting violation. Or probably when they are trying to call people out over what they do or did, they are getting violation. We cannot say anything educational without the platform without our uh, post being suppressed and all of that but this man has been on this internet going left and right being so right to the sixth and at the same time being ignorant and silly because i do not see how this full-grown man is working with donald trump and also part of the people he has really upper hand and also he's part of the people with this project 2025. Really, this man shouldn't have any platform. And I really do not understand who made him judge to talk about uh, women and not tell me. It's really crazy. Let's get into this. Can someone track down the women Kamala Harris says are bleeding out in parking lots because Roe v. Wade was overturned? Don't hold your breath. His name is John McEntee. He's one of the architects of Project 2025. He works for the Heritage Foundation. He also was a part of Donald Trump's administration. He was the one that went from spot to spot holding Donald Trump's briefcase. And again, John McEntee is one of the architects of Project 2025. He posted that video over on his TikTok account. That's what he does. Over on his TikTok accounts, he, he posts these 15-second um, videos that are along these lines and, and border on racism, misogyny, um, xenophobia, and homophobia. Well, he asked the question, and there are thousands of women down in the comment section telling him their story but the sad part is he doesn't care he doesn't care about their stories but we do and one of my mutuals she went through and pulled out a few stories i'm going to share her video with you have you seen john mcintee's video yet well holy shit did he open the floodgates there are thousands tens of thousands of comments just like this my daughter nearly lost her life as she miscarried triplets that didn't expel her body and three hospitals wouldn't remove them this comment section isn't what you were expecting is it sending love to all these bravely sharing their story and from jen yep passed out in my front yard after bleeding for four days an er doc had already told me it didn't look good but there was nothing they could do and i should contact my ob the following monday Ectopic pregnancy survivor sat in the ER while my doctor called her attorney to find out if I could receive medicine or if I had to wait until I bled internally to help me. Does it have to be a parking lot? Does the location matter? Because it took me over three weeks to have a complete miscarriage because my doctor and because my hospital and several doctors refused to perform a DNC. My friend went through an emergency cesarean after carrying her terminal fetus for 10 weeks after learning of his condition. She was dying and now she can no longer have any babies. I had an ectopic pregnancy. I was bleeding out of my living room, had to have multiple blood transfusions. Irish Eye says, I had an ectopic in Texas four months ago. They refused treatment until 10 weeks because of laws. My 1.5-year-old almost lost his mother for a very wanted pregnancy. Nico says, hi, that would be me, 19 weeks, still birth at home. After going to three hospitals and begging my doctor for help for weeks, now I have an autoimmune disease triggered by the blood loss. My friend had to go into septic shock before she could get help for MMC because the doctor couldn't perform an abortion. Monica says, I wasn't in a parking lot, but my husband found me unconscious in our bathroom from bleeding out from a miscarriage. 
Samara says, me, I was six weeks when I was told there wasn't a heartbeat, fevers and bleeding for three months. Everyone refused to help me due to the laws, living in Texas due to my husband being in the military. Boop says, I watched my wife labor for five days and almost bled out after pushing for four hours. I was there every minute. No one should be forced to go through what she went through. I was sent home from two ERs with an ectopic and a sheet of rupture signs and told to come back when I did, and I was actively dying. I sat at home for three weeks dying of sepsis before it ruptured. And Sam says, quite literally, the other day my pregnant friend started bleeding, went to the hospital, was refused care, and was told to finish bleeding at home and come back when there was 100% no blood. If Republicans think that they are going to win in November, they are so fucking wrong. We are done dying for them. And there are thousands of other women telling their stories down in that comment section. But like I said, he does not care. He represents Republicans. He represents Donald Trump. He represents MAGA nuts. They are cruel. They don't care about the pain that women are going through with these abortion bans across the country. They do not care. And the only way to turn this around is to make sure we vote each and every one of them out of office. Uh-huh. That's the only way that we can get back some of what we lost as women in this country. Can someone track down the women Kamala Harris says are bleeding out in part? Hi, I'm Brianna, and I'm one of those women. Although I've never spoke with Kamala Harris, I have a story too, and it went on for weeks. My miscarriage story went on for four to five weeks to be exact. I don't know if you made this video for clout or what your purpose of making this video was for, but it really triggered me. No woman or anyone for that matter deserves to go through what I and many other women have experienced. And the reason I'm going to stand and talk on this is because if I ever have a daughter, I would never want her to have to live through the hell that I lived through. I fought for my life. I begged for help. And I could not get help because of the abortion bed laws in the state of Georgia. My providers were scared to touch me in fear of their own medical license. And I understand. I'm a nurse. I'm in health care. We worry about our license every day. We work hard for them. But no mother that has wanted and prayed for a child should have to go through this. I wanted my child. My child died in me, okay? It died in me when I was five weeks pregnant. There was nothing I could do. It was beyond my power. But because when I found out the child was passed, I should have been seven or eight weeks, I could not get the medical care I needed. So whether you want to believe it or not, there is many women out here that have lived through this saddened story. And many who have almost bled out. And people like me who also experience pain. Not only physical pain, but mental pain and trauma that will haunt us forever. I want a big family. But I am so scared that if I ever, ever get pregnant again, and this happens, I may lose my life. All because of a damn law. Grow up. This could cost me followers, and if it does, I'm okay, because I know I've lost the right ones. In 2024, if you don't understand that white privilege doesn't equal financial privilege, there's a good chance it's because you choose to be willfully ignorant. White privilege doesn't mean that you grew up rich or that you didn't have a hard life. It's the concept that by the mere coincidence of you being born white or white presenting, that you have an inherent privilege. You're afforded certain benefits of the doubt that not everyone gets. It's the difference from a white person walking into a store and a customer salesperson walking up and saying, hi, can we help you find something today? To a black person walking in that same store with that same customer service person following them around because they looked kind of suspicious. It's the black family that can't leave their family photos hanging on the wall when they're selling their house because the home appraiser might undervalue their house by as much as $500,000. And for fuck's sakes, you've never had to apologize for being white. 
Had your parents fucked on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday, you wouldn't even be you. Rather, just acknowledge that the system that was designed by and for people that look like you has never been a level playing field. I hope this made it clear. Have a great fucking weekend. So this is all I got from this video and I hope this video make a lot of sense to a lot of people because this is something we have been talking about for years and uh, to this very moment we are still being called names because we try to let them understand that they have privilege that we do not have. And each time we I remember having an argument with my friend where we talk, we're talking about him. I was I told him that I mean like his white privilege would not let him listen to what I have to say, right? And he told me that I, the first thing he told me was like, I have worked all my life and I never, I was not born with anything and all that my parents were all poor. I said, I told, made him understand that when I say privilege, that I do not mean that uh, he is probably rich or something, that I meant that uh, his skin color and all that is all got him all immune and the rest of it, that there are places he is going to be let in and I won't let in. I mean, like a whole lot. It's not something that I will start like, you know, you all heard what she said. And that is absolutely true. I mean, this is the life black people have, like, you know, we've lived from the beginning to this very moment. You also heard about uh, um, the people that wanted to sell their house, but they couldn't hang their portrait right because if they know it's a black person that is selling the house or they own the house definitely the value drops right so now let me get back to mark ante or whatever that man's name is that man has been doing a whole lot on this god knows internet and the fact that nobody's holding this man accountable for the things he says and does is really appalling right i do not know how men all of a sudden started started talking about uh, women body and uh wanting to be or wanted to know what it's going on with women and what they are supposed to do and what they are not supposed to do last i checked you are not a woman so how do you want to talk about women's affair and how are you talking about women without even having any in depth about what it's going on now these are the things that make me think like you know some people are that I really don't know the people, these people, like, you know, people that speak like this or people that talk like this and have this kind of mindset. I don't know the kind of people they roll with. But sometimes when the people, the people you hang out with, like, really have a lot of influence on you. And you all already know that like, this Macante, Macante, or what his name is. I don't care if I'm pronouncing it right and all that because I really don't care about that man. This man is also part of the people that uh i mean that uh, he has this connection with uh, this project 2025 and he has really worked hand in hand and still working hand in hand with donald trump that's why every day people do not rest for him if it's not from black women because all his everything he talks about is all about black women and from black women now i am surprised that uh, he went into the other one really it's really very crazy that we wake up black women sorry black people and women in general wake up every day to different things now how do you want to tell me that i mean like you could you could see you see the stories of people sharing their experiences and all that these are the ones that were brave enough to talk about their experiences what of the ones that did not talk about their experiences and all that now i just don't understand why this is 20 24th century like 24th century and people cannot or i mean are not able to get dnc when they're alive they have like a life threatening issue and all that i mean like how do you let somebody probably having ethiopic uh, ethiopic pregnancy or i don't know like you know sorry if i am not getting some of them right like you know i'm a woman i understand that but there are some experiences that i have now lived especially like bringing in a child to the world and uh having to go through some certain things especially when a child you are supposed to like you know there are complications bringing a child to the world right 
And now it is now a, a just like what child. I'm sorry, sorry, I am digressing, but all of this really need to be like you know brought like straight up because it's still the same man, you know. Charlie Kirk said that uh Kirk Chad said that uh whether a woman is graved and all that that there is no need doing anything, all you have to do is give birth to the child. And he also said that if his his own child experienced something like that, that the only thing he can also do is to let the child, like even if the child is like five years, he will also let the child like bring forth the whatever foods that are understand what I am saying. Then looking at this, I think it's really stupid. When I say stupid, very stupid, that a full grown but like somebody that has brain cells is talking about this because I really don't understand how somebody arrived at this. But this is the experience women have to go through. Why? Just because they are women. They are women, you know? Sometimes I feel I ask myself, what is the like, you know, if they are on aliving women, they are doing so many things. Like, every, why must everything, like, you know, women are going through a lot and saying a lot. And somebody has to, because it is God's and audacity that met that, that man, sat down wherever, wherever he sat down and had to turn on his camera, set his whatever, and started talking bullshit because that is absolutely bullshit. And for those that are doing pro life, pro this and all that, if you are, if you think that a woman going through something, I mean, I didn't know how to explain it, that you are going to see a woman going through it, especially when there are complications. And because there is already a law saying that, uh, I mean, like, you know, something like this shouldn't happen. So it's either the woman is also like, you know, dying and the baby is also dying so nobody is to be say, like the woman can die that is what they are trying to tell me and uh i mean nothing can happen because the baby is more important than the person bringing the baby to the world i mean that is one of the most dumb thing i have like you know heard people say or like trying to say that this is a bill that we are passing out sincerely speaking it really doesn't make any single sense and for those that are pushing this i mean really you all i mean you all have a very special place somewhere outside the world because you do not need to be in the same space with people i mean that's all i have to say see you all in my next video bye for now